Okay, this is another quick video of something I'm doing in my game, and that is pick up and inspect. One of my pet peeves is like most games have like you pick something up and you rotate it in your face, and there's never anything interesting. It's not like you rotate it and there's a label with a clue, or it drops it because it has physics. It lands some anyway. So what's the point, right? Uh, all the good games way back when you just clicked it, it zoomed up. And then when you click it, it went back to where it was. So I'm doing that instead. So this is a quick way I did it to a lamp and I'll show you how I did it. It's just a style, a play style. If you like it, cool. Remember I'm using Git, so I'm just gonna do a Git status on my files. So right now my branch is up to date. All my files are clean. So let's go ahead and jump in. So basically here's the lamp. And how this works is um, you go, you click a lamp or any object and uh, over here, you click the lamp, whoa, it zips up and has text. So that's it. You just need the text, right? And you click it and it goes back. So it's really simple to implement. And I, I like the way it works a lot better for pickups. Mm, let's, no, who picks up a sofa? All right, let's pick this plant. Now something funky I've noticed, I don't know why, but you can't really do a lot of um, Playmaker stuff unless you unpack your prefabs in your asset like I, I bought this house so this thing is a prefab so I'm gonna explode it by doing right click prefab unpack completely whatever that means and I'm gonna go uh, tack an FSM to it now remember um, we're using a universal um, thing for our uh, raycasts and if you go to interact it's this is everything that I'm using for raycast and interacting with an object. Just like that TV, you click it, it changes its channel. So no, there's no logic in the raycast or the um, first person controller. It's all built into the TV object. All right, so same thing with the lamp. The lamp has all the logic it needs to, to fly towards us and it contains its own text. Okay, so back to our raycast. It's in this, this uh, logic and that's all there is to it. Basically, you click the mouse, it does a mouse pick, whatever you're pointing at, it's just storing the variable called is selected. That's it. And it's finished. Now it's doing a send event, a general uh, send event to a, a object named is selected. This is a variable that we just named in place. And the FSM name is object. Okay, so this is a global variable. And this is the FSM name. Now, if we go to the plant and we tack an FSM onto it, defaults to FSM. We're gonna go and rename that as what we need it to be, which is object. Okay, so we have an FSM name, object, and we're ready to go. So going back to our plant example, I'm sorry, going back to our lamp example, um, we have the setup basically where we're getting the property of where the lamp is and what its rotation is you know nothing magical there so we're getting the property of its position and its rotation okay so let's go to our plant let's do the same thing go to inspector and these are both transforms first thing is we're going to do is get that property and we're going to get its position and it's a vector three and let's go ahead and stash it into a new variable called position or pause for to being lazy same thing let's do that again grab transform just drag it into our state we're going to get its property whatever the rotation is and the rotation euler values but it's also a vector three but euler values is what you want and we'll store that in a new variable as well called rot um, so now that um, um, interact event is a global uh, function that we set up earlier. So we're going to do add a global transition, custom event, interact event. Okay, that goes back to that TV um, tutorial earlier. I'll put a link in there if I can find it. Um, okay, so what we're doing with the lamp was... Right here, we're doing a couple things. First thing we're going to do is 
uh, we're gonna disable the the mouse the mouse because we don't want to grab the lamp and run around with a, a, a you know the lamp in our face that's no fun we're gonna disable the script that controls the mouse and we're gonna move the object towards us all right so there's something called hand here so if I go up to my first person controller zoom out that's my first person controller here and what I did was I selected the parent and I re right clicked and created an empty right and that created a cube right where this is and I named it hand and I moved it slightly away from the um, the um, the center of the uh, first person controller actually you can't, it's hard to see so I'm actually gonna rotate it so you know what's going on here's my scene I'm gonna point right towards the lamp right there good and if we grab hand we should see the hand jump right in front of it so it's basically first person controller is our body the hand is somewhere right here that's where we want the the lamp to jump up to okay cool so let's go back to our plant so basically what we do here is we're going to disable the uh the mouse script so we go here, scroll up where our first person controller is. Let's go and lock this. Go to our first person controller and look for the script that's actually running. First person controller script. Just so gonna go ahead and drag that in here. Set the property. And I'm gonna look for just enabled. And I'm gonna leave that blank because we're just turning that off. We're going to move that plant towards our, our hand object. So we're going to just do a move, move object. And we're going to go ahead and use the owner because we're moving the actual thing we selected, which is the plant and the destination is going to be that hand that we just created. And let's go ahead and make sure that works. Click our plant, moves Great, it's a little close, but we can fool with that later. All right, and now I had a, a canvas set up. Um, it's basically a regular canvas. I think uh, you'll know how to do canvases with a text component, but it's basically over here. UI, it's disabled. Obviously, we toggle that on and off. Click here, it's disabled and we enable it, turns that on and off. That's what we're using to hide and show that text. So the next thing we wanna do for our plant script here is we're going to enable that text. Drag that in. Set property. We're simply gonna enable it. And this time we're gonna checkbox that on and that should turn everything on okay that's last thing i did was i also added the ui set text to that component in and setting the legacy text all right like over here obviously we are not doing a plant let's just go ahead and do a plant please water it okay so if you do this all the stuff is going to turn on at the same time now here's a here's a cool tip we don't really want it to work like this it's kind of blah so instead in playmaker you can force things to be a sequence so i want the text to paint after the plant is already on top of me so instead of doing all this we can close this stuff up now just so we can get a handle it's firing all the stuff up a sequence of asynchronously or at the same time if you do the cog you can make it an action sequence so it'll go move it to her face turn on the canvas and then write out the text and there we go perfect now once that's done all we have to do now is mouse down mouse done down make a just an event just, just type anything and then we're going to click this to create our button Control hold and drag over and this is our last state. This is where we're gonna reset the plant back once we click our button back to where it was. 
So piece of cake, we do the opposite of what we did here, which are set our property. So instead of get, we're gonna set the properties. Inspector, transform, set the property. It's position, vector three, and we save that. Click this instead of entering values. There's our variable position and same dealio. We're gonna set the property to rotation, Euler, Euler and rotation and that should be it yo we forgot to get rid of the text so two things we forgot was get rid of the text so that was the opposite of enabling our canvas let's Go ahead and disable and re-enable our first person controller script. And I can't talk today. So now we should be able to move and our purple text thing should go away when the lamp moves back. Hello, lamp. Yes, it's a wonderful computer lamp. Zip around. I'm gonna check out that plant. Comes, please water it, and it goes right back. All right, cool. I like the way that works better. It's up to you. If you wanna do that or the spin around the box in your face thing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and save this project. Go back to Git and do my check-in. If I do a Git status again, shows all the files that were changed. You can skip this part if you don't like it. It's boring. So, git add. Oh, whoa. It's all added. Git commit message. Added plant pickup. I'm going to be doing these pickups like for a ton of stuff that you can pick up and then, you know, add a lot of detail. So you don't have to. But I figure the more stuff people can actually explore, the more interesting and vibrant the game will be. And they'll have actions too, so we'll see. Add plan pickup. And then get push origin. Now, all those changes are in GitHub. Go back. We're all clean. All right, see you next time. Bye.